Hello, this is Mr. McGovern. Welcome to the eighth video on this series on two-dimensional collisions, where it's the final video in a series and I go through an NCA question. Because this topic is uh, doesn't usually take up a whole NCA question, I've picked a couple. So I've picked um, 2019 question A and B, or question 1A and B, and a 2021 question 1A. So this one here, the rollerblading one, is from 2019. Again, just like in all of these, if you want to go and try them yourself, feel free to stop the video and do that. Uh, but it might be helpful uh, just to watch me do it and then see if you can do it yourself independently. So Ellie and Chris are rollerblading. Assuming friction is negligible, the system of Ellie and Chris can be considered an isolated system in the horizontal direction. State a relevant physical quantity that is conserved during a collision between Chris and Ellie. So when we're talking collisions, we're thinking usually momentum. Um, and so you can say that total momentum is conserved in this case. Um, but you could also say for an equally valid answer is that if they were to collide, their centre of mass, its velocity is unchanged. So the velocity of the centre of the mass of the system is unchanged. So those are two ideas we've looked about, uh, learned about in this um, series. Right, the next question shows the collision. Um, it must be showing from above, I guess. They move off, so Ellie stops and Chris collides with her. They move off at right angles, shown in the diagram. Show that Ellie's speed R to the collision is 1.71 meters per second. Okay, so here's the process I go through for this two-dimensional collisions. Make sure we've got a before and after diagram. Um, we do the momentum arrows for before and afterwards. We put the vectors together in a vector addition diagram. We show the total momentum before is equal to after. Then we've got some sort of triangle we use Pythagoras or Sokatoa, and then we convert back to a speed after that. So they've already given us before and after diagrams. That makes life uh, much easier. So here's our momentum arrows. Chris has momentum going to the right, and Ellie and Chris's momentum uh, are going in that direction. So we don't know the values of them because they've given us the speeds, not the momentums. Um, so next we need to put them together in a vector addition diagram. So the one on the left doesn't need to change. We've just got the momentum of Chris. But the one on the right we have um, Chris is going up to the top right, Ellie's going to the top left, and you notice I've added these head to tail. Then from the start of where I've driven, drawn these um, arrows, I have um, the start of my total momentum, and that goes along to the end of Ali's arrow, and that's the end of my total momentum. And that's the same before and afterwards. That's the total momentum's unchanged before and afterwards. So I can tick off that I've put them in the diagram. What I'm now going to do is put numbers on these values so I can do a calculation with these. So always momentum is mass times velocity. And for Chris before, his mass 60 times his velocity, 1.8, we get 108. And then afterwards, we have Chris's speed is 1.1 meters a second. So that when you multiply those together, you get 66. So I can put all these values on. And the key here is that the value I, I calculated at the start, 108, that is the total momentum. That's all there is before the collision. And that equals the total momentum after the collision as well, which is part of that triangle, the 108. So that's a bit of a, a key point there. Now I've got two parts of this triangle at the end. So can I use Pythagoras or Sokatoa? Two parts, I'm going to use um, Pythagoras. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Put my numbers in, 66 squared plus B squared equals 108 squared. Um, the 108 is the hypotenuse, right? That's the longest side of that triangle. And then you rearrange that, you get B squared equals uh, 7,000. Square root B equals 85. Not the final answer because part six on the right hand side here says don't forget to convert back to a speed. This is momentum. 85 momentums is how much Ali's got. So Ali's got 85 momentums. Momentum is equal to mass times velocity. We've got a mass is 50. We just rearrange and we get the velocity of 1.7. So that's probably about a merit question. Um, but a few steps to get there. Okay, I wanted to do a center of mass question as well. Um, this one was particularly hard because it's given you lots of bits of information to do a center of mass uh, question. So there's a balancing toy. Two masses joined by a rigid wire. Uh, can be approximated by two masses joined by a wire. The distance between the center of mass of the angular, angler, and the fish is 14. So the total distance between them both is 14. The pivot point is at the bottom of the pole under the angler. 
So they've told us there's a pivot point down there and it's five centimeters below the angular. All right. So the question actually asks, assuming the y has no mass, show where the center of mass is. Show that it's 3.75 centimeters below the pivot point. So with these center of mass questions, I always start with a coordinate system. So I've just added my coordinate system here. I'm going to do my, you can do your calculations where one of the objects is the zero point. Um, but because they asked for the final answer below the pivot point, I'm going to show this uh, calculation using the zero point below the pivot point. You can choose your zero point to be everywhere as long as you're consistent and you'll get the right answer. And so I'm going to choose mine to be at the pivot point. You always have to choose a positive direction. You always have to choose a negative direction. So I've just chosen upwards to be positive, downwards to be negative. Here's the center of mass equation, which is given to you in the formula sheet. The hard part is not putting the masses in. The hard part is putting the positions in. So my mass of my angler is it's 5 centimeters above so I've got 5 centimeters times 30 grams and I'll talk about why I've used centimeters and grams um, further on but you can use centimeters and grams for this formula so you don't have to change this formula into kgs and then I've got minus 9 centimeters so where did that minus 9 come from well first of all minus because the fish is in the negative direction so that's why it's minus instead of plus 9 comes because it's 9 centimeters below the pivot point. See the 14 centimeters is between the two objects. The pivot point's five centimeters below that. And so that means from my zero point down to my fish must be nine centimeters times 50. And the mass is added together as 80. Simplify that, you get minus 300 over 80. Now, look at what happens with the units. The grams cancel out. So it didn't matter that I use grams in this equation instead of kgs because they cancel out. So as long as you're consistent along this, using just this equation, they'll cancel out. And then my final unit I get is in centimetres. And that's my answer. Negative 3.75 centimetres. The negative direction is below zero. It just completely describes where the centre of mass is perfectly. Okay? So this equation, because there's masses on the top and bottom, the masses cancel out. You can use whatever unit for mass. You can use grams or kg, whatever you want. It'll cancel out. Um, and centimetres is... You put centimeters into the right hand side of the equation but you want your answer in in that unit anyway so you can use grams and centimeters you can use kgs and um, meters for this it doesn't matter as long as you're consistent so those are those two questions hope you found them useful um, and i'll catch you in the next series